Hey guys, my name is Colin. This is Colin Talks Crypto. If you've followed me for a while, you know I do a series called EOS Mega Updates. And this is EOS Mega Update 23, Fireside Chat Edition, because I'm going to do this a little differently than normal. We're just going to have a conversation about some very important topics regarding EOS. So in this video, we're going to talk about improved voting, decentralization of governance, block producers, cartelization, proxies, basically a lot of things covering voting and governance on EOS. Thank you for joining me. So I want to start off by saying that I do hold EOS tokens. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as financial advice. And I'm going to keep it raw in this video. I don't sugarcoat things. And if you know me by now, you know that I keep it real. I speak from the heart. And if I see an issue, I will talk about it. I'm not going to avoid it. Even though I hold the tokens, I'm going to have a critical eye of the blockchain. And I invite you guys to partake in the conversation in the comments below. I want to hear what you have to say about these topics as well. And I'm just giving you my viewpoint from someone who's been fairly involved in EOS since the ICO from day one. All right. So this kind of all started with me loading up a block producer rankings page. I went to blocks.io and I looked at the current rankings. And if you're not aware, I am an active proxy on the EOS blockchain. I am currently placed number three of all proxies. And I'm number one of all proxies who actually vote on referendums. But we'll get more into that a little bit later in this video. So I glanced at the block producer standings list and I noticed something that alarmed me very much as someone who is deeply involved in EOS. Because I am a proxy, I do care about block producers, I do take the time to research them, and I do look at referendum proposals, I really take my time to research things, and I care. I would say I'm probably more active than your average user, and thus why people may entrust me with their proxy votes, right? So when I was glancing at this list of block producers, I was very startled to notice that basically, I would say like two of the 30 block producers that I currently vote for as a proxy, are in the top 21, two of 30. And that's very alarming to me. And actually, not just alarming, that actually kind of pisses me off because I know that these block producers are solid. I know that they are top performers. For example, and I'm not gonna name all of my favorite block producers, but here's like five that I consider to be like solid to the core, no reason they should not be in the top 21, okay? EOS New York, EOS Authority, EOS Nation, EOS Canada, Cypherglass, I mean, there's even more. There's EOS 42, the list goes on, right? And there are many of you. And if I didn't name you, please forgive me because I know that you guys know you are contributing a ton. There's a lot of solid block producers. And I don't speak Chinese, so I am not in the Chinese loops. I'll admit that. I don't know exactly what's being said in the Chinese communities. However, I do know that these guys have been freaking instrumental in upholding the blockchain on EOS. Like, for example, we wouldn't have an EOS user agreement or the resource exchange without the work of EOS Authority and EOS New York. Just hands down, bar none, we would not have them. So why the heck aren't these two block producers in the top 21? That is a flaw, and I'm going to call it as such. That is an error in governance. So in my tweet, I said basically that, and I said, what is the plan to fix voting cartelization? And I want to hear back from you guys, and I really would love to hear back from Block One, Dan Larimer, and Brendan Bloomer. If you have the time of day to please answer this very important conversation, I really would appreciate it. Whether it's on Twitter or right here in the comments section, I want to hear your guys' answers to what's being done about this. And I understand that Block One has a certain potential liability when they get too involved in the blockchain. They can't overstep their bounds and dictate which way the blockchain is going to go because that involves them in legal liabilities. That makes them look like they're in control of the blockchain. And they're being very careful to not do that because that would involve them in securities issues and causing the blockchain itself problems with a centralized controlling point. So I respect that completely. And I think that's the most ingenious way of managing things. They have stepped back, they create the software, the community uses the software, and the community updates and implements changes it wants. That is perfectly fine. However, I do appreciate and respect Block One's opinion. First of all, because Dan Larimer himself is the creator of the EOSIO software. So he knows it probably better than anyone else. 
And Brendan Bloomer is the CEO of Block One, and so I appreciate and respect his very insightful guidance as well. I think they're both very intelligent people, and I respect their opinion. I also respect the opinion of the community equally, US New York, Authority, etc. These block producers, I think, to me, carry equal weight in their opinions of how things are being run. I also equally carry my own opinion because I am a fairly versed proxy, and so I take all that into account when I'm looking at this. And I'm not saying this is some kind of whining, like, oh, my picks aren't in the top 21. That's not the issue here. The issue is that right now we have a massive preponderance of Asian-based and China-based, mostly, block producers in control of the EOS blockchain. And there's nothing against China, so if you're off into some kind of racist thing, like, that's not it at all. I love Chinese people, nothing wrong with them, they're ingenious in their own right. But I feel like, unfortunately, they have figured out a way to game the system. They have gamed the system on EOS such that they are keeping themselves in the top 21 position. Now, there's a couple of ways to look at this. For one, yes, they are incentivized to do good. They are incentivized to keep the blockchain running, and it has been. There is no reason to believe that it has not been performing as it should be. However, to me, the concern is this. While they are incentivized to do good and keep the blockchain running, as it has been, the fact that all of these top BPs that I've seen aren't even anywhere close to the top 21 indicates that there is a manipulation occurring in the voting structure. And that's no surprise to the EOS community. We've been talking about that for a while. Because of the 30 vote nature per token, it is possible for one exchange to vote with its customers tokens for one thing, and then to trade its votes with other block producers or exchanges and round robin those votes all amongst themselves to then keep their inner circle all in the top 21. And I think that that's what's been happening. So basically this is a call to action of how do we handle this? And it's a chicken and egg problem because as a user pointed out, these block producers as entrenched block producers are not going to want to be removed and they're not gonna allow themselves to be removed. So how do we do this? Joel Jesse says, when we talk about changing voting on EOS, we are talking about redistribution of wealth. Because if you suddenly flip the voting rules or the governance and the block producer rankings switch dramatically, that's pay. That's block producer pay. If block producer number one suddenly drops to number 10 or 25, that's a huge factor. And he's not going to let that happen willingly, right? If he's number one and he's receiving the highest sliding scale payments on EOS, because that's how it works, position number one gets paid the highest. There's no way he's going to approve being put into 25th place based on a change in governance. So there's a chicken and egg problem where entrenched BPs have an incentivization to keep it the way it is, to keep the status quo. And that's what I'm concerned about. And Joel hit it on the head here. So he says, when we're talking about changing voting on EOS, we're talking about redistribution of wealth. The early token buyers do not want things changed. These guys who amassed giant amounts of tokens do not want to make it so that they don't receive massive amounts of rewards, a chicken and egg problem. Exchanges are voting with user held funds. And because the users themselves are not voting, but instead the exchange is voting on their behalf, what happens is these exchanges are then able to use an enormous, massive amount of EOS to vote amongst their inner circles, amongst their cartels. And this is what I think has been happening actually the most. And you can see that when you look at the block producer standings, there are several exchanges who themselves are in the top 21, like Huobi, Bitfinex, etc. Um, and these exchanges, I feel, have voted themselves in using a system of uh, customer custodial EOS tokens on their exchange, voting for themselves, voting for their friends who have agreed to vote back for them. And that is the problem that we see here. So now that we've kind of isolated what's the problem on EOS's governance, how do we fix it? EOS Authority made an incredibly awesome post in response to my question about how do we improve cartelization. And EOS Authority said, we are approaching this at EOS Authority in two ways. One, modeling one token, one vote, one token, one vote squared, QV, and more. And two, new DPOS voting model that we've been working with university for eight months. That's probably the best response I've heard so far. And I really appreciate props to, again, EOS Authority should be in the top 21. That's an example right there. 
And there are a number of solutions in the community. So there are people definitely working on this. EOS New York is also working on how do we incentivize voters more fairly and properly to get them encouraged to vote as well. So there's a lot of BPs and people trying to solve this from different angles. And I think that we will see an answer to this. I also want to hear what Block One has as a solution. And amongst all these ideas, I want us to get put in place an improvement in governance and decentralization on EOS. But there are definitely ideas being put forth, and EOS Authority has right here given us one of them. EOS New York has done that, and there are others as well, which I'll get into. Now, I took a look into EOS Authority's proposal here about modeling one token, one vote, and it's incredible. They have created a site that simulates what would happen if governance was suddenly changed to one token, one vote. And I'll put it on the screen right here. And you can see that this is what the lineup would look like if we did change it to one token, one vote today. Now here's another one that they modeled, and this is what one token, one vote squared looks like. So to my understanding, basically, this is how it works. If you have one token and you vote for one block producer, it's worth one weight. But if you had two tokens and you vote for one block producer, it would have the weight of four. So what this does is it discourages voting for more than one block producer. And what that does in turn is it discourages cartelization because it discourages on an exponential scale the number of block producers that you would vote for. It discourages that. So actually every voter is encouraged to pick their favorite one block producer and vote for it. And logically, if an exchange is going to vote, they're going to pick themselves. And if a block producer is going to vote, they're going to pick themselves. They're not going to pick themselves and their friend because they've just not only cut their votes in half, they've actually, it's more than half because it's an exponential cut. So that is freaking genius. I haven't fully looked at all the ins and outs. I want to see if it can be gamed, for example. But from what I can see, that looks very strong as a solution. One token, one vote squared is what I think is the best solution for the voting structure so far, based on what I can see here from EOS Authority's model page. And when you look at the model, look at how it turns out. These are good block producers. These are solid block producers. This is a good mixture between Western and Eastern BPs. And in my opinion, it cuts out the cartelization that's taking place. So again, I'm not sure if it can be gamed and I'd like to see further testing on that, but I feel very strongly about the one token, one vote squared that US Authority has put forth. I encourage you to take a look at that page yourself. And on their point number two is a new DPOS voting model that they've been working with University for eight months. That one, I haven't finished watching the video, so I can't really comment on that. I'm definitely interested because, as usual, EOS Authority comes up with solid ideas. So I encourage you to check out that video as well and also include that in our discussion and, and our debate um, if it turns out to be a worthwhile DPOS model. Personally, I'm leaning toward a simpler approach, one token, one vote squared, and keep it something simple like that. The simpler the solution, the better, but we need something that works. And I want to thank Block One for continuing to create awesome tools that enable developers and development on the EOS blockchain to become more efficient and easier for developers. They continue to update the EOS IO software on a regular basis to improve its performance and to fix bugs. So they're doing an incredible job right there by itself. Now, that being said, I made this tweet here and I really stand by this. And I said, not to be a broken record, but I'd like to see some efforts made in the direction of improved voting and decentralization of governance before I see more tools. So again, like I really appreciate all these tools and I think it's incredible and I think that the improvements performance are awesome, but I don't think that that's what we need to be working on right now in light of this cartelization issue that I'm referring to here. Because a blockchain is only as good as its base layer. Layer one is the base layer of any blockchain. And you can create layer two solutions. For example, on the Bitcoin network, this is a good example. The BTC chain, we have the blockchain, right? And it's limited to a couple megabytes block size. And you can create layer two solutions to try to scale on top of that, whether it's Lightning Network or any other solution that you have on layer two. But layer two only operates as efficiently and robustly and securely as layer one is. So. If your layer one is weak in any way, its effects only get magnified on layer two. So if you have full blocks on layer one for Bitcoin, for example, on layer two, the lightning network, you're not gonna be able to open and close the lightning channels cheaply or quickly. And the congestion is going to have a further ramification on the layer two. 
And so likewise on EOS, if the blockchain has a cartelization on the base layer, you can do whatever you want on layer two to improve its performance, but the power is concentrated in this group of BPs who are, for all intents and purposes, unremovable. They're not able to be voted out because they have such a strong foothold and entrenchment in the base layer. But what if they don't want to remove themselves? What if they don't want to improve the governance? It won't get improved because they have no incentive to do so and because they control the majority of the votes. Therefore, they cannot be removed. And that's the base layer, layer one. And that's where, again, I feel we need to be concentrating our efforts. And then definitely we can continue to improve layer two. And there's nothing with doing both simultaneously. But right now, I am concerned that I'm not seeing enough improvement on the layer one voting decentralization of governance issue that we're talking about here. So again, while I appreciate the tools, I want to see more efforts made in the direction of improved voting and decentralization of governance before I see all these tools being created. I'd much rather see that. So I feel like in a way block one is slightly skewed in their prioritization of what they're taking on upon themselves. And again, this is equally the community's responsibility as well. The next step is, is how are we going to put them in place with a cartel of BPs who don't want them perhaps to be put in place? And that's where we get into, is Block One going to vote with their tokens? Can they vote with their tokens without being considered a controlling body for the entire blockchain, which involves them in further legal ramifications? Um, could they... Uh, delegate their tokens to a proxy to have them vote on their behalf so it's not block one directly that's controlling the votes but really like if they proxied their votes to me for a week I could put in place all the changes that were necessary and then they could undelegate their votes to me and then technically they didn't do anything I was the one or another proxy was the one who took action temporarily to kind of like get the blockchain kind of on the right track again and then once the improved governance model and the improved voter model was put in place, like let's say it was one token, one vote squared, get that in place, and then we let the blockchain back on its own two feet. Um, it's just an idea. It's not really ideal because you shouldn't have to rely on a massive amount of tokens. Again, that's a centralized factor. But if we're dealing with a centralized issue, as we are with a cartel of BPs, then it's sort of like fighting fire with fire at this point. It really comes down to which one's the lesser evil. And in the grand scheme of things on a long-term basis, if taking action right now, like using their tokens to write the cartelization results in a long-term 10-year benefit, I think that might be the lesser evil, the lesser wrong, as opposed to letting the cartel remain in place and it just go downhill from here with no changes being able to be put forth that has any change on voter control of the blockchain. So I know I'm kind of rambling here, guys, but um, this is just a freestyle fireside chat of how I see things on EOS. And it's been a long time since I've done a video, and this is how I see things. I'm a very forward-looking person. I invest on a long-term basis, I vote on a long-term basis, and I look at EOS's blockchain governance on a long-term basis. And so I want what's right for EOS in a 10-year, 20-year down the road basis. And if I see a threat looming, which is what I see right now, that impedes that in the long term, uh, that's why I'm making this video. And I do want to say something about it. So I guess this is a chance for me to plug my own proxy. Uh, if you do have tokens and you don't vote yet, or you want to vote in an intelligent way, I will do my best as your proxy to put those votes to the best use. I will continue to vote for referendums and BPs that I feel strengthens the network and strengthens token holders in the long run, not in the short term. And I feel that these exchanges, these, you know, Huobi, Bitfinex, these guys who possibly are uh, vote buying themselves and um, forming a cartel into place are not looking at the long term effects because, yeah, they may consider themselves benevolent, but by manipulating the system in the way that they are, they are really ruining the ability for a plutocracy. They're ruining the governance structure because effectively token holders don't have the ability to make changes. Sorry about the planes overhead, guys. I think we must be near like an airport here in Puerto Rico. I moved to Puerto Rico and I live here now and it's a beautiful country and I highly recommend it for all you crypto holders to get 0% uh, on your crypto capital gains.
So I think that these exchanges on EOS are misguided in how they're looking at their actions because they're looking at the short term and not the long term. Even if they consider themselves benevolent, they've put themselves in an entrenched position and they've basically censored the voters from having a say. And that's never a good thing. And they're reaping the daily rewards, all that EOS that's getting rewarded to them, that 1% inflation, that's why they're doing it. They're doing it because they're putting money over what's best for the chain in the long term. And that's what I want to see cut out because I don't like that. And I think that in the long term, that's a failing equation. And uh, shout out to Investing with a Difference, another one of the good proxies out there, good voters. And he responded to my tweet as well. And he said, we have worked on exchange voting solution with virtual accounts and VRAM that can make it almost free for centralized exchanges to allow user to cast vote. Governance is going to come back on track with token holders will. Tools are needed for devs and that is a parallel effort. Yes and no is my response to this tweet. That's awesome. Like, yes, we definitely should make it easy for exchanges to have a very low cost virtual RAM, virtual accounts method to allow token holders who are keeping their EOS tokens on exchanges like Huobi or Bitfinex to allow the token holders to then vote easily with those tokens. And a potential reason, as he's pointing out here, that an exchange may not allow the token holder to vote is because it does cost RAM and it does take resources to do that. And so it's not really in the best interest of the exchange to allow the token holder to do that when it costs them resources. So what Raman of Investing with a Difference is saying here is we want to make it, we want to make it easy for exchanges and resource free or as close as possible to make it really simple for them to enable their user base to vote on their own behalf instead of the exchange voting for them. So now my rebuttal to that is it's, I think it's wishful thinking because I think that exchanges aren't always acting in, like I said, the long-term best interests of their token holders. I think some of them will enable this. Um, I don't think that they all will because it hurts the exchange. Like for example, a token holder has a thousand EOS on Huobi exchange. Huobi says, hey, we've enabled you to vote. And the user goes, oh, great. Well, I don't want to vote for Huobi. I want to vote for EOS authority or I want to vote for EOS New York. And I don't even want to vote for Huobi anymore. Well, how does that benefit Huobi? It doesn't. And so Huobi is not encouraged to enable a voter to vote for someone other than themselves when they're already fully able to vote for themselves with all user funds. So it's incentivized against that happening. So that's why I think it probably will have limited effectiveness. It should be done because it's still a step in the right direction, but I don't think that it will have a sweeping change for the positive because of incentivization. It all comes down to incentivizing change and exchanges aren't incentivized to allow users to vote. And the second point here, he says, governance is going to come back on track with token holders will. And I think that's what we've all wanted to see, but as the block producer standing show, that's not the case currently. And I'm not going to put my head under the pillow and pretend there's not a problem. Because if token holders did have a full say, we would have BPs like US Authority and US New York in the top 21, in the top 10 probably, honestly. So the proof is in the pudding. Like, yeah, governance is going to come back on track with token holders will, well, it hasn't. And it hasn't because token holders, quite frankly, aren't in full control of the chain right now. I'm just gonna be blunt. Token holders have only partial control. If you look at my proxy, when you have 28 of the 30 BPs that I have handpicked selectively and carefully, and they're all outside the top 21 except for two, we have a governance issue here, guys. And token holders are not in full control. So if token holders aren't in full control of the chain, they can't affect a governance change. And that's the chicken and egg problem that we're seeing here. And we'll leave that for phase two, I think, of the discussion when we finally determine what's the solution we need to put in place. Once we've got the solution in place, be it one token, one vote squared, a new DPoS governance model, a uh, incentivization of voters that encourages more voting, such as EOS New York's putting forth, or all of these, and maybe something even addition that Block One comes up with, when we've got all those in place, Phase two is, how do we get it in place? Because there's an entrenchment going on here. But we need to take it one step at a time, get the solution figured out, then put it in place. And that's how I see it currently. Lastly, I wanna just take a glance at 
block producers voting, and I want to take a look at proxies voting for referendums. So the referendum system on EOS is another innovation made possible, an incredible innovation that allows on-chain voting to demonstrate token holders' will. Now this is interesting because as we've just discussed, these entrenched exchanges and BPs actually don't really vote on referendums. But it came to my attention recently, and actually thanks and props to Crypto Tim. He does an awesome YouTube channel. He focuses heavily on EOS news, and um, he touched upon this point. And this is what led me down the rabbit hole. And this is what I found. So if you go to eostitan.com slash heatmap, and I'm gonna put that on the screen here, you can see the current BPs and what referendums they're voting for. Now keep in mind, these are sentiment referendums. These aren't binding referendums because the way the US user agreement changed things is it made a 15 of 21 block producer vote the actual binder for the referendum system. But these referendums show sentiment. They show what the token holders want. They show token holders will. And likewise, you can click on the proxy button and you will see the list of proxies and what referendums the proxies have voted on. And you'll see currently I'm the first placed proxy that has voted. Now there's a hidden thing going on here and I just found this out. Any block producer or proxy who had not voted on a single referendum was hidden from view. They weren't even shown in this list. So right now it gives me the false impression of being the first place proxy. I'm not. And if you go to the BP page, it gives these BPs the impression of being the top BPs. They're not. So what I did is I requested EOS Titan, major props to EOS Titan, again, they're top BP, they should probably be in the top 21, for making this change to their page. And they made the change that you can see non-voters. And when you click on non-voters, suddenly you see all the BPs from one on down, whether they voted or not. And you quickly can see that there are several BPs who have not voted for a single referendum proposal whatsoever. And there are a multitude of block producers who have voted for only one referendum proposal, the EOS upgrade, which is an important upgrade to have happen. Now, if we click over on the proxies page and we do the same thing and view the non-voting and the voting proxies, you'll see that suddenly there are two above me. There's a Brock Pierce proxy and there's a made of Starks proxy. And you'll see many other proxies suddenly appear. In fact, of the top 35 proxies, only three have voted at all for anything referendum wise. So first of all, props to Brock Pierce for being so involved in the community, but please vote for some referendums. You've got 10 million EOS tokens currently. Please spend some time, do some research and vote on some referendum proposals. It will help strengthen the community to show the direction of the token holders will. And also, if you're a token holder and you're voting for a proxy, just keep in mind that not all proxies are voting on referendums. You probably want one that's active. So that would be myself, that would be investing with a difference, and that would be Luke Stokes of the top three that actually do vote on referendums. So take a look at the EOS Titan page, check that out for yourself. Look at what BPs and what proxies are not even participating in the referendum structure. They're not even involved, and that is also alarming. And I wanted to bring that to light because it was a hidden factor and you couldn't see that before with the way that these various heat map pages were laid out previously. So big thanks to EOS Titan for making that change and making it very clear to see who isn't voting because there are quite a few. There's more non-voters than there are voters for proposals. And the reason that proposals are so important is because it guides the direction of the blockchain. Again, it's a sentiment indicator. And for example, why did I vote on EOS upgrade proposal? to specify, you know, September 23rd is the date I'd like to see EOS 1.8 software, the EOS IO 1.8 software be put into place. It's because I want the BPs to know that I'm paying attention to that as a proxy. So if they aren't on board with that upgrade, I'm going to be looking at them critically with a critical eye because they obviously know that I'm in favor of upgrading on the 23rd of September. Hence my proxy vote on the referendum proposal. So yes, it's a sentiment proposal, but it means something. It's a way of communicating. It's a way that the network governance communicates within itself. Block producers, proxies, and regular voters are able to show what they want to have happen. And so if a block producer isn't voting on referendums, how do we know what they're supporting? 
How do we know if they want to reduce inflation from 5% to 1%? How do we know if they're on board for upgrading the EOSIO software to version 1.8 on September 3rd? If they don't signal their intent, if they don't signal their sentiment, we don't know for sure what they're doing. What are their intents? So really on chain is the way you do it. And that's why I encourage proxies to vote for even things like the upgrade date, because it shows the BPs what we're paying attention to. And so guys, as always, please vote. That's the most important thing on EOS right now. If every token holder voted, we would have a chance at itself overthrowing the cartelization. And lastly, before I let you guys go on this EOS Mega Update 23 fireside chat, is the EOS IO 1.8 tentative scheduled upgrade for September 23rd. And this was put forth again by EOS New York as a proposal to get the community involved on a unified date. Again, EOS New York should be in the top 10 BPs easily, probably the top five. And I'm really thankful that they did that because it unifies the community on an exact date. And we don't have this never ending delayment and testing of the software before we put it in place. Because 1.8 is a very important version. It enables delegation of resources on the behalf of others. And what that does is it enables voice, you know, Block One's voice social media app to actually operate. It also enables the uh, control knob for block producers to then adjust the inflation rate from, for example, 5% down to commonly supported 1%. And that is another change that we want to see. And I want to take this opportunity to clarify any misunderstanding or misinterpretation of a tweet I made where I said that EOSIO 1.8 enables voice and inflation reduction to 1%. It enables it as in it makes it possible. It doesn't enable it as in it flips on a switch. I think some people may have misduplicated or misinterpreted the definition of enable, which I can understand. Um, to mean flip on the switch, turn these things on instantly with 1.8, as opposed to simply make them possible. And 1.8 makes them possible. And that's why EOSIO 1.8 is a very, very important upgrade. One of the biggest ones we've seen so far in EOS history. All right, guys, so that's everything I have for you today. Please vote on EOS. It's a beautiful blockchain. It's the highest performing, most feature rich and able blockchain around. I love using it. I love the community. There's so many positive people, but we do have an issue in governance and we do need to solve it ASAP. And that's why I want to engage the community and block one on a debate of what we can do on an immediate basis to get this fixed as fast as possible. I know it takes time to build things. I know it takes time to fix things, but this is priority and a bunch of random tools are not priority at the moment. So what can we do together to make EOS great? And so I love you all. I love the community for EOS. It's such a positive and great place. And I love Block One. Keep up the great work, guys. And let me know what you think in the comments below and on Twitter when I post this. Let's talk. All right, guys, have a great day. And let's end off with this beautiful, beautiful view from the top of an island right next to Puerto Rico. This is the island of Culebra. And it's looking out over the surrounding islands right around sunset. It's such a beautiful place here, guys.